Wow, what a way to win. Alright, my name is Jason Philosophy. This is... Go ahead. Present yourself. I'm, I'm that bird. And I'm Hyacinthus. Hyacinthus, you slut. Alright. <laughs> take the piss out of this floating head. Are we? Are we? I, I suppose so. <laughs> you tell me. Do you yes. want to know what? You don't want to know. You want to know. Why? You don't want to know. You want to know why. Why? Let's rock and roll. Okay. On episode 147 of the Drunken Peasants podcast, the peasants criticized a video by a YouTuber, DZ Philosophy. DZ was calling TJ an idiot and made the claim of objective morality being demonstrable. He made the claim that philosophy can be used to determine objective morality by using questions like, do the ends justify the means, or is this beneficial? Peasants dismiss him by saying philosophy itself is subjective, and in a later video, DZ will go on to make a case for objective morality. What's up, guys? DZ Philosophy here. Now, today I'm going to be defining and speaking about objective morality. So first, we're going to start off with the definitions to ensure that what I say stays truthful to what it means. Uh, first of all, I need to say that that toothpick, I had no intention of bringing that into the no, Yeah, I noticed that at first, and I thought you were trying to be like Clint Eastwood or some shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fucking idiot, but <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was dumb. Intellectual honesty, if you will. Now, first of all, I'm going to define objective morality. Um, objective. So, objective is defined as not influenced by personal feelings or opinions in considering and representing facts. Morality is defined as principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong, good or bad behavior. Yeah. Good is just, uh, defined as to be decided of or approved of. approved of. Right is defined as morally good, justified or acceptable, yeah. true or correct as fact. Now before we go on, we're going to take another look at morality. Principles concerning the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior. If you look at the first bullet right under it, it says a particular system of values and principles of conduct. Not just principles, values and principles. And that values things is going to be very important. And you'll see why. Yeah, of course, because it's subjective. Values within itself is subjective. I understand that. Um, the whole thing is um, the principles of conduct can be deemed to be um, objective. But that's only for the principles of conduct. That's all I was getting at. <clears throat> In my points, when I was trying to go for objective morality, I was saying that, well, you can find objectively right ways of going about things that are not dependent on the mind to exist, thereby making an objective moral. But, yeah, I understand now that the whole thing about morality is it has to be both values and principles of conduct. But the thing about that is, if your values are based on what's already fact, isn't that therefore objective? Um, uh, it's a, it can be objective in the, in the sense that it, it is aimed toward a specific goal, um, but intent is not a thing that is is something that is like demonstrable outside of your own interest. Oh yeah, well the, no, the thing about that is Think about the universe's existence in the first place. You see, no, it's not like somebody put that, um, like made the objective decision to push life into existence, to push existence into existence, to make life an objective process that was bound to happen through the process of evolution, things like that. You see, all these things just happen out of non existence and then they exist. So, yeah. It's like, that would be my argument for some sort of um, finding a moral out of the objective process and thereby making an objective moral, moral. But I understand the whole thing about that is the whole um, argument that I would use against objective morality is just that the two words uh, are conflict, uh, well, they conflict with each other. They're both, um, they're making, they make an oxymoron um, that doesn't make any sense. To have something objective is to be something that's completely reliant without one's mind. Um, but to have a moral is to have something that's completely dependent on one's mind. So there we have contradiction. But 
Yeah, well, I would say, to say that we can find value based on what the objective process is. Well, I, I, I disagree. I disagree with the way that, at least with the way that you said that. I, I can yeah. understand how you can get to um, objectivity can happen once morality is granted. Uh, like once you grant that you have a specific, uh, a specific value or goal that you want to go for, there, uh, there can be an objective way, uh, an objective best way to go toward getting to that goal. Uh, the thing is that objective morality, it, it's, it's more of. It, it suggests that morality itself is something that can be found or something that uh, happens without us thinking exactly. about it. And well, uh, it's kind of like moral objectivity. Uh, it, it could exist in the second definition of objective, meaning having a goal. Yeah. It, it's, only, it's only really... There can only really be a... Uh, an objective justification for a moral uh, for an action once uh, the morality itself has been determined or decided on. Yeah, which is why I pretty much um, I completely indemnified my whole idea. I've changed it from being an argument for objective morality to an argument of moral absolutism, and effectively all that means moral absolutism is the ethical reading from the Wikipedia page, but it's an, abs um, it's, an ex um, it's an ethical view that particular actions are intrinsically right or wrong. And that's in its most basic form. Yeah, um, the thing is I have a problem with that too. I, I don't think that, that moral absolutes, as far as I'm aware, I'm not aware of any moral absolute that exists. What about uh, the fact that life exists and it came from an objective process? Uh, that's not a question of morality, that's just a question of fact. Yeah. But whether life exists is not has whether life exists doesn't mean that life itself is good or bad. Uh, like I can actually I can bring you any history book and say, hey, look at this, uh, page sixty four. Hitler, uh, he existed, so he was a good guy. Yeah. Uh, the fact that the fact that there is a person or the fact that that an ideology is based on a thing that actually exists doesn't mean that the conclusions of the ideology are correct. So even yeah. if you're basing something on something true, uh, it doesn't mean that your outcomes will also be uh, just as correct. I Are mean, you sure? we can move on to uh, moral absolutism in a second, but I want to kind of rewind back to what we were saying no and um, kind of bounce off of something that I said in the comment section of one of your videos. Uh, All right. Easy where I said that this entire argument is simply one of, like, language, essentially. We're conflating different definitions with each other and then just riding along the same, like, train of thought, you know? Um, yeah. There's a couple different meanings of objective. For example, thing, like there's the objectivity, which means that it can't be mind-dependent, it can't depend on the mind, but there's also mm -hmm. objectivity meaning it's just not concerned with subjective values and uh, judgments and such, such like that. But, um, for example, the abstract truth 1 plus 1 equals 2 under the base 10 number system is true regardless of if there's a person there to recognize it or not, but it is a mind-dependent observation. Yeah. It is objectively right. true, but it's still mind-dependent. So it really depends on which way you come across or you go about defining things as objective. Um, also, I understand that in your in the ethical theories that you're uh, putting forth, you were saying that essentially it's objective because I'm considering objective truths about the world and basing my judgments on that fact. And in a way, that's true. That's th those are like the objective statement that deforestation causes these consequences, right? That's an objective statement because it's yeah. objectively true regardless of if someone's there to see it or not, or regardless of anyone's opinions on the subject. Um, yeah. But also, you have to question, like, morality isn't just that statement. It's not just deforestation has these consequences. It's deforestation has these consequences, and those consequences make it bad. Yeah. That's inherently based upon a subjective value judgment. Yeah. 
But the whole thing is, um, if damage is literally what stops something from being, or stops something from like um, continuing on an objective process, say for instance evolution, um, then I would hasten to say that that'd be uh, one of the only things that could be considered an objective bad because like, it defeats the whole purpose of the process in the first. The thing place. is, the thing is, that's actually that's a claim that really needs to be substantiated. That's just saying something exists, so it is a good thing that this thing continues to exist. That's yeah, like true. saying, that's like saying, hey, I have cancer. I shouldn't get this removed because if I get my cancer removed, it will die. Yeah, I would right. say that the process doesn't have any inherent purpose. It might have inherent drive, but it doesn't have inherent purpose. Yeah, of course. But that's why I was thinking we have to. Yeah, that's right. It will always lead to a subjective bias, and the subjective bias is the arrogance of humanity to basically push humanity as the the forefront, the at the forefront of what is deserving to have um, benefit, um, which is like, always subjective. So I understand entirely. That's why you can't have objective morals. But I do understand that now. That's the whole thing that's changed about me. Sorry. You want to continue with the video? Actually, um, I want to actually just say another thing, just based on what uh, Hyacinth just said. When you're looking at that definition of uh, of mora uh, morality, it says it is a principle discerning the difference between good and bad and right and wrong. A part of the definition of good is that which is moral, and the part another part of the definition of right is that which is accordance in accordance with morality. So. When, yeah. when the thing, when morality is something that it describes... Maybe question, in a way. It, it's, it's essentially, it's saying that morality is the thing that determines what is moral. Yeah. And what is moral is the thing yeah, that morality is describing. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's essentially, morality d doesn't actually have a definition outside yeah. of just saying the things that are moral. Yeah, so that's why we'd have to move on to the definition of ethics and like that. But I'm actually going to pull that up. Um, but yeah. Well, the thing is, we, we can't actually get a working definition for morality using the yeah. other definition of good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, that only really works out for a uh, utilitarian form of morality, uh, seeing what has the most benefit but then there's also another layer of saying, what form of benefit? Yeah. Yeah. It's always done with the subjective lens of being human, your perspective. You can only understand things from what you experience, like say for instance, just sensory emotions, um, other perceptions, things like that. That's how you face your life. I mean, that's how you conduct yourself. Uh, some people can put themselves on moral high grounds and say, oh, um, well, I'm not going to hurt animals or eat meat or something like that. But at the end of the day, it's subjective. It's subjective. It has no, has no objective value over other people. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. But if you look at what's most beneficial for humanity is progression, uh, there are plenty of ways to find out objective, objectively which... Uh, which uh, directions to head in that, that would, in fact, benefit us more so than others. There is, in, there is a certain way of finding some level of absolutism um, just through due diligence, investigation, and inquiry. Yeah, adopting a utilitarian framework can be, or inherently is, a subjective, or basically a, a statement of subjective values. Yeah. Um, but there is an objectively correct answer within a subjective framework, you know? Yeah. Sure. So if you guys that, want to... Because, like, the... Like, preservation of life, that's a... That is a... A utilitarian kind yeah. of... Uh, it is a utilitarian goal. The thing is that there is the subjective assumption that life is something that should be preserved. It depends which life. Which life is worth more than others. Yeah. yeah. Or, or that life, or that life in general, should be uh, preserved. Like yeah. there, is, there is the question of, hey, if uh, if a meteor came and destroyed the Earth and all of its inhabitants, everything on Earth would immediately die. Is that bad? 
it's definitely not, not something that I'm sure a lot of people would like. I'm sure a lot of people would prefer that not to happen. But is that something necessarily bad? It's not interesting in anything. What? It is what we assign to it, really. Yeah. So, so like, e- even, even things that are, are the strictest to uh, things that are objectively uh, existent, yeah. e- even something that is strictly uh, based on that has to work on the subjective assumption that the thing that exists is a good thing. Yeah, of course. It always back to subjectivity. Yeah. Subject- yeah subjectivity is always based on perspective mm-hmm. of what you experience. Effectively, it is what you make of it. Uh, just like the life, morality, all that kind of stuff, ethics, you name it. It's all effectively what you make of it uh, because it's too ambiguous um, and it's too, uh, it differs too much per individual uh, to be able to find a finite um, way of saying that, yes, this is in fact the right subjective perspective. Uh, you know what I mean? It's it makes no sense anyway in the first place. It's equivocal. Yeah. Let's finally want to continue with the video. Well, actually, I would um, say that just because something is subjective doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have a solid argument about yeah. finding like a shared conclusion with two people. Because like we could have separate ethical philosophies, but um, if we like isolate those subjective values that we share, and then we build a framework from there, we can reach a consensus. Yeah, but if we reach a consensus, yeah, if we reach a consensus, um, isn't that just effectively making might make right? No, I'm not saying that makes it objective. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. I'm just saying that that inherent subjectivity doesn't mean that we can't have a good argument about it. Mm Mm-hmm. Very good. So yeah, do we finally want to? Have we have we we said? Want to continue with the video? Sure. Yeah. So now I'm going to give you an example of what would be considered an objective moral verily to the definition. Self-benefit at face value is merely a subjective moral, and an example of this would be, even though I'm a vegan, I know that a fat, juicy steak tantalizes my taste buds. The subjective moral of this is me benefiting my sense of taste. And we're back to morality. You see... Uh, benefiting my sense of taste. That packs more of a punch than you think it does. Because if you decide your lunch based on what benefits your sense of taste, if that's the principle on which you decide what you're going to eat, then the thing that benefits your sense of taste is the right decision. Do you mind elaborating? Uh, basically, um... Since the definition of morality is the principle that discerns the difference between right and wrong and good and bad, uh, and good being uh, having the definition of things that are uh, desirable, uh, then that means that morally, uh, having the benefit of your taste, having if you're deciding something based on whether something tastes good, like whether you like something, then that if that's what you're deciding based on, then that is your principle. Yeah. And to the uh, to the definition of morality, the principle that discerns what is right and wrong, if your basis is what is uh, what is tasty, then the thing that is tasty is the right answer because that is the thing that you want. That is what is desirable. Yeah. That is what is good or desirable as its definition. From what I got from that, what is tasty was just his example of a subjective value from which he's trying to contrast his own framework from. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the whole thing I've pretty much come to conclusion on this. It's effectively just an argument of which one gives um, or which one gives the most of uh, the biggest, the most, um, the most correct argument. I guess you could say, uh, not correct. Uh, um, the most Cohesive, nice, yeah, a cogent argument for re- like the most the most amount of reason for the subjective moral. Sorry, I'm stumbling on. That. 
words. But what I mean is, if we are to basically compare subjective morals, we can find out which one is superior by virtue of the most amount of benefit, thereby falling within the utilitarian lens. But that is but also that's still, you, have, you have to determine what benefit, what benefit is important, which benefit is more valuable. Yeah. You could easily you could easily say you could easily say something like um, my the the benefit to my taste the the fact that I I want to have a a good uh, sandwich is more important than whether uh, a, a a chicken dies. That you that's a subjective thing that that's determined subjectively. Think of it like this: if I'm like an evil mastermind and I want to just destroy the entire human race. I could say, well, by my subjective perception of what is beneficial, this is the best thing to do. Yeah. yeah. Your subjective perception of what is beneficial would lead you to want to stop me, most likely. Yeah. Subjective. What I'm getting at is, um, say, for instance, if we were to compare subjective morals, say, for instance, comparing your own taste to, say, for instance, the potential... Damn it! What the potential, the, the guaranteed damaging contribution to a global crisis um, is to basically really just uh, to be next level selfish, effectively. And, uh, and that's that's not even to uh, take a high moral ground or anything like that. That's just to be factual because all you're doing right there is you're benefiting your sense over that which could benefit an entire planet. But then again, so, yeah. you're, there, there still has to be the working assumption that benefiting other people on the planet is a good thing. You, ha you yeah. have to make the assumption that that's something valuable. And that also but, like, carries an assumption of like argumentum ad populium in a way. Yeah. But if like it is my own, if if I'm that ev like that crazy mastermind, that is my own like solitary judgment of what is good, and I probably should reevaluate myself and get checked into some asylum. But yeah. if, if, like, if your if your argument against that is like you're only going by what you think is subjective, then I can just point the finger back at all of you and say you're just doing the same thing. And if you have an argument against that, it's basically going to be argumentum ad populum. I see. I see what it is. Um, effectively, it's like it's a it's very very equivalent to a moral dilemma. Um, what it is is. If you are to basically continue to benefit your sense of taste, what you're doing is potentially putting online the actual global food uh, yield. Because by contributing to a global crisis, you're making the climate more harsh, therefore making food yield a lot more difficult, therefore economically putting that at risk, perhaps leading to a depression, another depression, economically, financially, which in fact would go against your whole desires as well with food yield being that you won't have enough food because you won't be able to afford it or because it's not enough. So in the long run, you know that would, would go in fact against our desires. So if I mean, that it defeats the purpose, if taking your own taste buds over what would defeat uh, your desires in the long run, that is morally really ambiguous and not a very good argument. Um. <laughs> well, it, it is a good argument against moral objectivity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, definitely against moral objectivity. But yeah, just discussing um, based on like which subjective morals would be held higher than others. Well, I could just as easily say like those people in Africa who are starving because we're not caring enough to preserve our our fertile land to feed the population of the of the world. I could just say that I don't care about them enough to make it to perceive it as less valuable or yeah, as more right. valuable than my own per, like my own sensation of taste when I have that experience of eating a hamburger or something. Um, but it's, we know for a fact that it's less desirable in the long run. Well, the thing is, the thing is that even 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 assuming even assuming that something is going to be less desirable in the long run. That's also to assume that there is more value in the long run than in the short run. That that's to assume that me eating something right now and getting what I want right now is is less value, uh, less valuable than me being able to get something later. Or not uh, dying of a heart attack. 
if you therefore do that, what you're doing is you're cutting off what you could get. Yeah, but even Which still, that's that's the uh, assumption that what you could get is a good thing, anyways. But yeah, like Sorry. all you can make are objective statements. You can't make objective value judgments about these things. You well, know, yeah. will cause that kid to die in Africa of starvation, and you can say this will cause these consequences in the long run that I personally find to be less desirable because of value X, Y, and Z. Yeah, but like find zero uh, myself. <laughs> A very simple way of, of uh, explaining this or talking about this subject. Global food pop, uh, food yield dropping uh, by a considerable amount be desirable. Is that in fact desirable to you? The thing is, what does that matter? Yeah, it is to me, but that doesn't make it objective. It matters to the rest of the, uh, the human populace in the future. But and does the rest of the human populace in the future matter? Sorry? Does the rest of the human populace in the future matter? Is that something valuable? Does subjectively you might not, you might not think so. And but that's I think the, yeah, that's that's why that's why it's a confusing topic, subjective morality. Sorry. That's why subjective morality is a it's a confusing topic. Like yeah. uh, moral moral statements or moral opinions are things that could really only be held by a person, and things that were things that are collectively considered uh, moral or immoral are just things that many people agree are moral or immoral. So it's subjective on two levels. One, on the level of it being mind-dependent, and two, on the level of the fact that the subjective value judgments which premise the entire ethical philosophy, whichever one it may be, they're, they're all subjective as well. Therefore, yeah. everything after it is subjective. There's morality by an inv individual and then morality by consensus, which is just <clears throat> morality by many individuals. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah. All right. Do so you want to wait now, unless you, unless you still want to comment? Well, I was actually gonna say, uh, and a really easy way of getting to the uh, uh, describing the the whole dilemma of is uh, is being benefited later on a good thing. Like I I have a sandwich next to me right now. And I want that sandwich. I've already had some. I've already given myself the benefit of having some. <laughs> and I, I know that it is, uh, it is a good sandwich. Yeah. Uh, and it, there would be a question of saying, hey, if I took a gun and I killed myself right now, I would not be able to have the rest of that sandwich. But is me having the rest of that sandwich a good thing? The, that, that doesn't matter because it's not a matter of whether it's Thing. Exactly, we're all gonna die anyway. So, like, our welfare in the future, like, long term, yeah, scale, it doesn't matter because we're all gonna die anyway. So, yeah. So it's like it's really anyway? it's I I really think morality itself is something self refuting. It's yeah. it's to say that morality is basically to say that you're gonna make a judgment on something that you decide on whatever it is that you're deciding. But the thing is that the judgment means that you're assuming that what you're deciding on is something worth deciding on. Yeah. Very, very, very good. Very good. Yeah, we can continue. What doesn't is the wrong decision. Are, are you seeing this here? Yeah. If you value your sense of taste, and your sense of taste is what you make decisions based on, then the right decision is just what is in accordance with what you value. Yeah. Um, now, the objective moral of benefit is would be to create the most welfare with the least amount of detriment. The reason I'm vegan is because I understand the value of life, of which... Yeah, we've already pretty much discussed that part, so I think we've been speaking more of it. Yeah. Yeah. We are I will do explaining so later. We Good. I like an explanation for that. Uh, but first, I want to know... Wait, did you actually get to the explanation, or... I've seen this what? video before, I just... You actually uh, listened to the explanation, actually, like, comment on it? Yeah, you remember? the the value of life, yeah, I, I did. Yeah, wait, do you remember what time frame? Yeah. Uh, I think it's... Let me go to... Actually, I can check the video right now, uh, and see exactly where it is. Uh, it starts over... Hmm. Oh, this is taste. All right, so if you go to the five-minute five mark. Uh, 
five minute mark. Damn. Yeah, it's a, it's at the five minute two second mark. Uh, it is. All right, it's gonna take a lot to load. Oh, it's yeah. Right. The connection is absolutely bullshit. They need to do something. They really need to do something with the amending. Uh, they need to amend something about the fucking you know investing money into the actual connection so that way it would fucking you know more. Yeah. Proper. I mean, the yeah, that, freaking, that, DP says Canada sucks. Freaking Australia sucks. Let's get real. Yeah, Canada and Australia both suck. Um, I want to move to Sweden or Japan. I hear those oh, places have a good place. Don't, don't go to Sweden. <laughs> what, uh, what, what's happening there? Just, just don't go to anywhere in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just, just you, you don't so need to. I'm going you don't to need to leave in Sweden. Put him. Wrecked. Oh, shit. The natural, objective, moral for life's <laughs> worth. Great, we're finally gonna get something. <laughs> Am I the other one who's experiencing like the video itself is lagging? Yeah, I, or is yeah. that just part of the? It's, it's. I think it's like you're getting a uh, lag on the video, and it's kind of conveying to us. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh. Well. Thing objective and moral. Thank you. Please go on. Tell us, tell us something not influenced by personal feelings or opinions. That is also a principle or value that can determine the difference between right or wrong. Life originally started yeah, from nothing but raw materials and a seemingly perfect circumstance. Evolution by nature causes life to exist. A process that holds true for the entire universe. Jesus by very That is really bad lag. But I'm gonna try and see if I can reload this bit. I really apologize for bad connection, so I'm just gonna make sure that it gets us to feel sweet. Yeah, on episode two, never up. Yeah. This is really fucking bad. This is what I'm talking about. The fucking Australian connection is absolutely horrific. Uh, and they yeah. won't do that. They won't, like, introduce 4G cables and shit like that, so I can't get connection. Like, I literally max out at 600-something kilobytes per second incoming connection. Uh, and I'll max out at, like, 50 kilobytes uh, as my output. It's fucking stupid. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry for you, man. That's yeah, it's pretty cool. fucking bad. I can't go online or anything. Yeah. I try going online. I get like fucking 300 as my ping. Pretty fucking right. bad. From nothing but raw materials and a seemingly perfect circumstance, evolution by nature causes life Jesus to Christ. exist. A Still process that holds up. true for the entire universe. By very nature, we have meaning and worth. Also, that's the philosophy behind it. To be honest, I'm actually thoroughly impressed. I'm thoroughly impressed. I never thought I would ever taste such a delicious word salad. Gross. Uh, natural, moral for life's worth. Okay, now two of these words are contradictory, actually. Yeah. Uh, objective and worth. They're ob they're they cannot coincide. Yeah. Uh, because worth is something that is determined by a person and something that is a. Yeah, what I was getting at here was saying that um, if objective, um, if any objectivity was to have any sort of level or semblance of worth, it would come from the matter of fact of its existence in the first place, and its existence depended on another objective process. The objective process, of course, being reality, life, evolution, stuff like that. So I guess I'm coming from a wrong angle when it comes to presenting uh, presenting an, um, an argument for objectivity and morals. So yeah, I understand. And I think we've already discussed most of this. When it comes to this shit, I just made fucking terrible arguments. But yeah, I'm glad that you guys have helped um, helped me indemnify, ratify, rectify, uh, yeah, quantify, uh, whatever the fuck, modify, edify. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> These guys have done that. But atheist, atheist, I wish he was here because he'd be able to pres uh, provide incredibly good cool input. He's the uh, one who actually convinced. I don't know if you actually have him on Skype or if you have him uh, uh, on Facebook or something, but if you want, you could shoot him a message and send him the link. Yeah, hold up. If you guys want to speak about this, like, within yourselves, I'm just going to send him a tweet. Alrighty. I mean, I don't really... I was just going to say that, like, life's work and objective moral are kind of, like, categorically incompatible. Yeah. Well, technically, objective and moral, the only reason those are not really competitive, uh, um, compatible is because moral is, def is based on something being worth something, 
No, like, even if we give, like, objective moral merit, like, just moral and worth don't seem to go together. Well, worth see, worth really necessitates moral. It's something that is that has to occur before uh, before moral. Sure, because but like in the in the definition of moral, it's something that it is a value that is a principle. Yes, and, and worth those... worth is really the, just the thing that estimates that value and ends up being the basis of what is moral. Yes, but I would normally see that for something other than, for example, life or some other objectively existent thing. I would normally see that for something like uh, happiness or suffering, you know? Mm. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I'm just asking him to add me on Skype and Facebook so we can join the group. But yeah, if anyone's watching this hangout, um, well, first of all, holy shit. Thank you. Um, but second of all, if you want to discuss this with me or discuss this with these 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 rather bright young gentlemen, add me on Skype. And if you guys want, I'll just, whoever whoever I manage to like you know uh, not sign, um, but like sift through to make sure that they're actually like worth um, any level of intellect, um, intellect. But yeah, if, if they're worth any of that stuff, like, worth be a good, like, is it, is it a panel member that you call it when you're in, like, a hangout? Like, there's panel members or whatever the fuck they call it. But yeah, if, if, if you guys are okay, if anyone watches this and anyone wants to, like, actually join, just add me on Skype at darren.extravic and send me a message and tell me that you want to join um, in the discussion. Add me. And I'll tell these guys, um, yeah, etc. You get the point. You get the point. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, I'm just, you know. Objective is something that is not Unless determined. You input, mate. I was actually just going to say, like, um, if we look at, for example, objective moral, that is what uh, moral nihilism refutes. That's, this is essentially what I'm getting at. And then life's worth, um, which... If we, you know, transitively like bring objective over there, that's also what existential nihilism refutes. So yeah. then I just see these two juxtaposed to each other: objective moral, and then presumably objective worth of life. And it's just strange because they're both in the same sentence, and that's the kind of dissonance that I was describing. Yeah. Which is actually coming, making me come to the conclusion that there is like, uh, this is actually helping me reject. Um, absolute morality. Because morality within itself is just far too you know, dead black. Uh, yeah. Morality, but yeah, uh, I hate it when people say that. Oh, uh, uh, you atheists, uh, morals. Uh, you have no morals. The rest of it. Like, therefore, you guys can't make good decisions. Like, that's absolutely fucking ridiculous. That's essentially them just elevating their subjective yeah to the to the, like, place of objectivity, of objective truth, because they believe it comes from an objectively existing god. And it's... Yeah. It's, it's, it's just... Bad bad. Bad. Actually, yeah, the, the problem with that, though, there's actually another problem with that, though, that even if... Uh, even if whatever... whatever religion uh, was absolutely true, and people could know that it was ac actually absolutely true, yeah. if there was a, a god and people could know the... Uh, the will or the desires of the god, oh, they god. would still have the same problem where yeah. why is it that what the god wants is important? That's just another... Exactly. It's just another subjective another subjective mind. Yeah, yeah. so... It's like, like we're, we're adopting that as our, as our, like, measuring stick subjectively, and, like, it's because they... I lost my train of thought, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. But yeah, it is conceptually, hypothetically, theoretically, all that shit is literally impossible. It's literally impossible because it makes no freaking sense. It doesn't. It can like it, by very definition, by very nature, it cannot come to a conclusion by virtue of its ambiguity, by virtue of it all being subjective. Therefore, it's impossible for it to be object. Subject is oh. the very of object. But yeah, so the whole thing about it is. What they're doing is they're basing everything on false pretenses, false premises, uh, or on a false premise. Say, for instance, that God exists, 
demonstrably incorrect. If God itself is conceptually impossible. It breaks the law of non-contradiction by virtue of being not being able to be proven or disproven. It makes it a null hypothesis, which in fact, a null hypothesis debunks itself. So God literally debunks himself by virtue of that. Uh, I wouldn't so, would agree to that. Because for all we know, it's um, it's the case that we just we're just all a bunch of brains and and vats experiencing some illusory world, and that could be objectively true, and we can't prove it or disprove it. But what is true by what I would consider I would I can personally believe in um, existential or not existential uh, episte epistemic uh, nihilism or epistemological nihilism in the sense that any degree of certainty by which someone can, you know, draw the line in the sand and say, okay, I, I accept this thing as true now, that's inherently a subjective... Yeah. That's a, and that's a subjective judgment there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, an another thing that I just, I think, I, I really think that the, the contents of the video is really, we've talked about everything that's in there, uh, there, the what I really talked about in that video is a, a narrow part of the a t the topic that I think we've already gone uh, broader than uh, broader than that video is will be really relevant from here on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. we I think we've really covered everything that was in there. So we could go on to other other subjects or other ideas. Yeah. What I was gonna say is um by most standards like but most inherently subjective standards of certainty, solipsism would be considered false. But it, just because it's both unfalsifiable and unverifiable, that doesn't mean it's inherently false. You know? Mm. Or, yeah, of course, because you conceptualize it. So that's and, so, concept can exist. and so this actually, this actually um, brings us back to a different disagreement I had with you on when you said that, I can object, that you could objectively prove that God doesn't exist. I just kind of like presented somewhat of a counter argument to it, but I was saying in the Yeah, you could objectively prove that God doesn't necessarily, but that's yeah. as far as you can really go. Well, you can do it in the same way that you can disprove objective reality. So if you can do that in the same way that you disprove objective morality, that can All right, okay, then, then do it. Because well, like, like showing how objective morality is... Uh, is not is like it's self contradictory, then that can you can you can you really do that for the existence of a god? Like I yeah. know you can do that for the existence of a specific god or a specific uh, a specific idea of holiness. Sure. Yeah. But can you do it for just a a, a god's that. existence? Go ahead. Wait, sorry. What'd you say? Can, can you do that for deities in general, or is it just? I'm sorry. What? What did you say? I don't know. Me? Yeah. I said you can do it for you can disprove a specific uh, the idea of a specific god or a specific idea of holiness. But can you do it? Can you prove objectively uh, that no god does or can exist? Yes. Okay. Can you can you do that for me? Sure. So effectively, it is an unfalsifiable hypothesis. Wait. We actually put up the definition of hypothesis. No, we, um, we I think we understand. Yeah. We know the Wait, we know the words. Sure, I'm not actually getting anything fucking wrong. What yeah, I'm saying, we, we know the words, we know the song and dance. I just want to hear how you do it. All right. So how I do it is basically we 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 narrow it down, we narrow God down to be the unfalsifiable hypothesis, which thereby makes it something that's defined as something that cannot be proven or disproved. Mm -hmm. um, but something that is by very nature to exist outside the universe, thereby no. putting in non-existent. You you so, already went wrong. Yeah, you're already presenting an individual like perception of God or conceptual conceptualization of a deity. Not even he, you're saying that uh, because a god isn't falsifiable, it does not exist. We're actually, if a god isn't falsifiable, it cannot be objectively proven to be true. That's all that. You can. It's all that 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 argument really gets to. Actually, um, actually, like if, if if I tell you I have an invisible dragon that you can that you can walk through, it doesn't manifest in any way, but yeah. it exists and it's in my garage. 
you can go in there and there's no way that you can tell that it, that it isn't there as well, described. Something, something can be unfalsifiable without being unverifiable. In the case of a god, you can't prove it absolutely to not exist, but it can present itself to you and prove itself to be existent to you. If it, it does exist, that is. But if it's not quantifiable, then... It butter. would be... In well, the thing is, that's actually another... That's a, a really, really simple... Uh, a really simple thing that I'm really surprised that you didn't... that you wouldn't already think through. If yeah. you... Say that you lived in the, the third century, and someone told you, hey, there is this really, really interesting thing called... Uh, called the... called quantum theory. There, there's a, a really, really unique thing called a quantum superstate, where things just exist and then they don't exist. But the thing, but when they do exist, they're still too small for you to ever find out about. Yeah. Uh, now, someone in the third century could be like, "This is an unfalsifiable claim. This is something that we have no way of actually looking at. Yeah, there's no, there's no way that we can actually grasp this, or or we can capture this. So therefore, it is wrong." Now, the only thing that they can really do with that is say, because we don't have the tools, uh, we don't currently have the tools or the method to grasp this, it's not reasonable to accept it as fact. Exactly. No, it's as far as you can bad. really go. But it's also not unverifiable because... <laughs> having the, the main definition of being outside of the universe, being omnipotent, which in, effect, in, in itself, omnipotence is contradictory because if you're omnipotent then you should be able to create something that is more powerful than you something that, that can that assume that assumes that you would want to that also assumes that omnipotence includes logical contradictions yeah, yeah. so there is no such thing as logical contradiction because the thing is if, if you're omnipotent and you have the power to create something that's stronger than you then you would be able to do that it's just that you would no longer be as omnipotent. Exactly. So you would you would you would still it would just be that you would lose your status of omnipotence and something else would gain it. Or we could have a whole different UN stage of you know? We can be I'm like sorry, what? power of two the power of T. Power of T. More terms, more terms, more terms. Infinity on top of infinity. There's like a whole thing on um uh I think it's the beast source or whatever the hell this panel is called. But they basically go through that stage and it's like, um, you can go through it and say that there are things that are bigger than infinities, but within themselves, they're still infinity. And there's no way to say that they're larger by volume, but to say that they are more complex, and complex leads to more details, which means within itself it would have more in it. But that still doesn't mean they're larger. It's very, very difficult to comprehend the whole concept. But yeah, it could be like infinity to the power of infinity. You know? Yeah, and the thing is, the thing about that is just because something is infinity to the power of infinity and is something infinitely greater than that doesn't mean that that thing doesn't exist in a way that we don't have the ability to measure. But infinity within itself isn't isn't something that's possible to exist. You see, the only thing that could, it could exist in is concept, uh, its concepts or processes. But I'm pretty sure that even within processes, infinity is impossible to get. Like, Why can't infinity exist in reality? Huh? Yeah, that's another Why can't claim. Can reality be infinite? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, just it, another claim that needs to be supported. Yeah, see, with like physics, that whole, um, the whole, basically, the universe is like, it's it's almost it runs on the probability of not basically falling in on itself. So within that, that gives the probability of it dying out. So therefore, we know for a fact that reality is definitely not in. Well, how how is it that you know that uh, that there is a black hole somewhere in this universe that leads to a completely different universe that does not have any yeah. form of borders anywhere. Yeah. Well, like, we don't even we, know if borders in this universe. Yeah, we, like, the thing is, it could be that reality is, it could be, possibly, that reality itself is infinite in some way, but yeah. what we are able to, what we are able to see, what we are able to measure, 
is not something that is capable of re measuring uh, beyond a certain point. As far as we can know, it infinitely fractalizes in both directions. Yeah. It keeps so, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it, it's really, it's really just what you what you have is really just a, a an argument against our ability to understand something. Really. Also, um, the fact that there, the universe will die a heat death doesn't mean it's not infinite either, because it can still have an infinite spatial existence without having anything going on inside of it. Yeah. But if the whole the, the area actually collapses in on itself and basically goes back to the state it was before the Big Bang. Well, actually, no. It's what it what it happens is everything uh, is that there is uh, with the heat death. What what is the the term for it? It's like it's not I chaos. Think. It's something other some other word that's uh, supposed to like represent chaos. But entropy. It, entropy. That's it. <laughs> uh, Essentially, also, it comes not, to a place where entropy is at its at it, it's at its maximum. There's no form of organization between um, between different uh, forms of energy, and nothing can exist within it other than the energy itself. And it's yeah. even to a point where the energy itself ceases to be able to actually uh, convey anything. In I, I suppose well, it, it would be it, say. It, it, like, the energy that is present loses its ability to organize with other forms of energy. Yeah, and, and it, essentially it, it, that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that space or uh, space or space time is not still existing. It just means that the energy within it is not capable of actually doing anything. Yeah, it 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 reaches an equilibrium. It's essentially when it's essentially like saying after you die your body won't exist because you'll be dead. Yeah. God damn, this, this shit is like blowing my mind right now. I mean, well, yeah, it's just... Because it's just there's there are things that we are able to... Uh, things that we're able to grasp with the, the tools that we have and the our measurement systems that... Like, what we have has limits. And yeah. we know this. Oh, the thing is we can very... expect... The things we can expect that our measuring systems will get better, our tools will improve, but we don't. But the thing is, we all we all already know that there are there are specific things that our tools are not able to to produce. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that yeah. But at the end so of the like, day, I personally think that uh, I probably. Hasten to say because I've heard a lot of physicists uh, say this and say that yeah, uh, infinity is physically impossible. But perhaps there'll be some sort of a man. Well, the thing is that that even I I understand the the compulsion to understand things that are scientifically viable, some things that have been shown to be uh, evident. But there's also I I get worried when people. Uh, Especially people who I'm personally affiliated with take science as gospel. Yes. Yeah, like specifically I, with the specifically with a statement, uh, matter cannot be created nor can it be destroyed. I don't believe that. Like I don't believe that it can be because I'm well, aware that as far as what has been scientifically shown, it never does get de created or destroyed. But I still matter. I don't I don't know. I don't know positively that there is no means by which matter can cease to exist or can be destroyed. Well, matter be can become deconstructed down to its like basic energetic components, but energy, as far as we can tell, cannot be created or destroyed. And and even still, I don't know for a fact that energy cannot be destroyed. I have no reason to think that it could, and I have plenty of reason to think that as far as what we have seen, it never has. But I, I, I still, to say that something is not possible, I, I can't ever really, uh, I can't ever really accept that unless it's something that is contradictory. Yeah, and the whole thing about that is, I, I, I'm not, I do not want to speak on um, this is not capability or not understanding the completion of what happens to matter when it does it just disappear? Does it, does it destroy? Become destroyed? What happens to it? Does it get sucked into a void? 
I wouldn't know. The universe after it reaches equilibrium? Sorry. Is, is that what we're saying? Oh, it's, I'm talking about, like, if, if we're going to uh, find quantifiably, like, we have to pull up an example of, like, any, of what we would possibly think um, would be an example of matter just disappearing or being destroyed. I mean, what happens... What well, the thing is that that's the, that's the point of it. As far as I'm aware, it's never been done, and it's never been observed in any way. Yeah, he just can't um, falsify. There, there, isn't any, there isn't any way that with our instruments we can show energy being created or destroyed. There is yeah. no way that we that with the tools that we have, with the understanding that we have, we have no way of of making it happen or we have no way of understanding how it could. So we have no reason to think that not, that matter could or could be created or destroyed. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it cannot. With some yeah. form of with some form of tools or with with other information that we don't have, uh, we don't have under our control. Do you guys want to make your peremptory um, statements? I have to go. What do you mean? Uh, uh, like statements. Oh, closing statements. Yeah. Um, I, I guess like really the only thing that I really could say would be that um, that when it comes to moral absolutes they, ca they can't really exist because they uh, they can't observe, exist objectively because they they assume value to whatever the thing is that is absolute so anything that is yeah. any moral statement is necessarily based on subjectivity that's really all Right, so I have to go, guys. So if you guys want to continue talking, that's fine. But yeah, I'll I'm I'll literally have to go right now. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. All right. All right. So uh, this, what do, what do you think? Like, what, what have you? Is there anything that has occurred within this little talk of ours? Anything that you that that's come up that you haven't thought of before that you haven't been prompted to think about? Honestly, I don't really think so. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a problem. <laughs> I wish I had more of an assertive voice so I could just butt, butt in and get my words out when I want to, but other than... Mm, yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm sorry for, for mansplaining this whole time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> After all, if I had taken up the majority of the time, they would just say I'm snake-splaining, so... Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I guess I, I'm a male bird, so I would be bird-splaining. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would be avian splaining. <laughs> Chick splaining. Well, yeah. All, all hail the avian race, you know. But <laughs> uh, I, I still know. Is, there, is there any is there any last things that you would want to say? Any other? Not any? really. No. Can't really say so. All look right. My eyes, humans. <laughs> no, look at yeah. Look into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think i think this, this is a good uh place to end all right all right well thanks for anyone who has watched or anyone who will be watching if you have any questions or statements that you'd like us to address or talk about in a possible uh possibly in a hangout afterward maybe maybe we can organize this again and talk about whatever subjects you have at hand but until then, uh, have a good time. You too.